we're gonna call this 2022 Taco Tuning Talk Tuesday. There we go. That was a lot of teas. All right, um, what we have, Cobb. This is a Cobb car. So I've been showing you guys ETS cars and what the ETS packages of parts will do on one of these potent little beasts. But today we have the Cobb. Now they call this the Next Gen Stage 2 package. Um, I'm still gonna call it Stage 1 because it more closely compares to what we used to call Stage 1. Um, stage 1 being intake exhaust and everything except factory J-pipe. And that's what we've always in the, in the past differentiated Stage 1 versus Stage 2 and that's whether it has factory downpipe catalytic converters, things like that. So since this does have factory J-pipe catalytic converters and things like that, we're going to still call it a stage one, even though Cobb in their um, renaming of things, rebranding, whatever, calls it a stage two. What is this package? Well, it is an intercooler. It is this fancy pipe, which is, uh, I guess you could call it a, a charge pipe. It is a panel filter drop-in, and it is a hard intake pipe that goes from the intake stock intake box down to the turbo. Now, one thing to note, this still has the charcoal filter, like in the previous video I was showing you guys. So it'll be interesting to see how this compares to the ETS car with the charcoal filter. So, the, the theory being that this pipe and this pipe are going to make more horsepower than stock pipe, stock pipe, charcoal removed, but we'll see. Uh, intercooler for intercooler, we're probably all about the same um, as far as performance goes from the ETS versus the Cobb. Um, so I'm not really expecting anything major there, but we're just gonna run this with my, with my OTS map that I built for the other car first, and then we will see if we can do some custom tuning. So I wanna talk real quick about what Dynamic Advance is and why it's important on Subarus. Previously on the older EJ generation Subarus, you would hear people talk about, my dam dropped, that means my engine's blown up. That is, that is not anywhere the case on these newer cars. Um, these engines have a dual knock sensor setup and it's very, very sensitive. And because it's so sensitive, these cars have the ability to adjust timing for many different situations. And when you think about the dynamic advance multiplier, the most important term in that phrase is dynamic. Dynamic means changing. And the whole point of this multiplier factor is it's going to allow the vehicle to change and adapt its ignition timing to meet the demands of the driver at that time. So when you think about like closed loop fueling, which is where the car is adjusting the fuel trims, why can't you have closed loop timing? People are afraid of timing because timing traditionally is what hurts an engine. Um, running too much timing, you blow a ring land, you, you send a rod out, whatnot. And so typically when you tune a car, you're tuning for the maximum potential of the ignition timing on that engine. But there are so many situations where you might not want the maximum potential. Say you're floored through fifth gear, sixth gear, and pulling up a hill with five people in the car. The car is going to want less timing, and it has no way to know that you have it loaded down, you know, with, with all this extra weight or all this extra load, or if it's a 120 degree day, because we get those now up here in Oregon, um, the car has to be able to adapt in order to survive. And that's what the Dynamic Advance does. So when the Dynamic Advance drops, that's not the end of the world. What it means is your car decided it wanted a little bit less timing. Sometimes, if it drops enough, it'll actually run a little bit less boost or a little bit less throttle position. There's a variety of different things that the, that the Dynamic Advance can do in these cars now. And if tuned properly, we can use that Dynamic Advance to make sure that the engine is safe all the time. Now, with a good tune, is it gonna drop? It might. Um, it, it, shouldn't in most driving situations, but there are some things that can cause the dam to drop. Um, there's a thing that a lot of people talk about, which is called false knock. And false knock is situations where the ECU sees what it thinks is, is knock, sees what it thinks is a misfire or a noise event, and it might drop the dynamic advance multiplier for that. Um, an example of that is 
flat foot shifting. If you flat foot shift in these cars, there's no special multipliers or modifiers for flat foot shifting. They get a little bit pissed off and it may drop the dam. Uh, when I was at the track the other weekend, on at least one of my runs, it dropped the dam when I was flat foot shifting from one to two. Um, I actually hit the limiter as well. And you know, it, it's, it's just, it's there to protect everything and to make sure. Now, the interesting thing about that is while it dropped the dam, it immediately started incrementing back up. So it, it pulled timing out for what it thought was a problem. And then it said, okay, we don't have a problem. And through the pass, by the end of the run, it had gotten back to full advance. So don't be afraid of the dynamic advance multiplier. If it is dropping, does it mean you have a problem? Probably not. This car had no mechanical issues. Um, it just had a dam drop. And this is on, like I said, the Cobb Stage 2 package. I guess they're not calling this one a next gen yet. They're just calling it the Cobb Stage 2. So that's what's on the car. That's what's flashed to it. We're gonna do baseline pulls on this map just to see where it sits, and then go ahead and load our OTS map and see where that sits. And then we're gonna custom tune the car to see what we can do with it. Now, as you can see currently, the dynamic advance is at one. So the car is currently happy. So we're gonna go ahead and do a pull and see where it ends up. Okay, base pull's not bad. As always, these cars like to do two pulls back to back. I disregard the first of the two pulls. Um, what we have is 273 horse and 309 torque to the wheels with this Cobb Stage 2 map. So let's see what our OTS map will do on this car. All right, so we got our OTS with top mount tune loaded in here and we're ready to do a pull and see how it stacks up to the Cobb Stage 2 tune. some results for you. Sorry about the glare. Let's move this over here. 273 horse on the Cobb tune, 309 torque. On my OTS map, 294 horse and 362 torque. Look at that torque gain. That's a 57 foot-pounds of torque gain right there and a 35 horsepower gain down low. Power everywhere, literally. And even way up top, we're still gaining pretty significant power. Um, how this stacks up with my uh, testing that I did the other week on the OTS maps. Let's see, we want intake test with, let me find it here. We want stage one ETS top mount catback exhaust with the AEM filter and carbon trap. With carbon. So pretty dang close, um, as you can see, it's a little cooler today, so turbo's coming in a little harder, but torque for torque, almost identical. A little bit more mid-range, not really sure what that's about. I might have to dig into the map there. But up top, the Cobb does win by a couple of horsepower. So that charge pipe and the hard inlet is slightly better than just a drop-in filter. So you can see from 5,000 on, this Cobb intake does do a little bit better. I'm gonna dig into the tune and see what this is about. Maybe I had some boost overshoot or something, but we'll, uh, we'll figure that out. Anyway, really interesting that this is the same map on these two cars, same boost target, same timing map, same everything. And we have gains past 5,000 on the Cobb setup versus just the drop-in filter in stock tube. 
So that's what a lot of people wanted to see is what does that Cobb tube do and change? Well, from 5,000, you gain a decent amount of horsepower. That's actually nine horsepower right there. Um, eight and a half, pretty good. I think it's probably worth power up top. Anything that'll make more power up top is worth spending money on. All right, made a few changes. Um, see if we can get that little bit of power back in the middle on this car. And that's the thing about OTS maps is they're not, you know, it, it's not a tailored map for every car, but it's pretty close. And as you can see, it was pretty dang close on this car versus uh, our car. So made a couple changes. We're gonna see if we can get a little bit, uh, a little bit more power in the mid range. And um, really there's not much else to clean up. The air fuels are perfect. Everything's pretty perfect. There's no knock. Um, but, you know, gonna, gonna just smooth it out a little bit. Finished up the custom tune. Um, like I said, I took a little bit of boost out down low, which smoothed it out a little bit. 356 foot pounds, 295 horsepower. So it did pick up a little bit of horsepower on the custom tune out the top, not a lot. I was hoping to get to 300. Um, probably would have gotten there if we'd taken the old carbon trap out, but this is not, not our car, it's the customer's car. So anyway, um, left the parts configuration exactly as they had it. I did want to mention one more thing about the dynamic advance multiplier. Something you have to remember is that when you tune these cars, the tuner has the capability to turn things like the dynamic advance multiplier off or to change the knock thresholds that the vehicle sees. Now, you might argue that changing those is fine, that they're too sensitive from the factory, whatnot, but there is a level at which changing those kinds of things is detrimental to the engine and can cause it not to detect knock when it's supposed to. So be careful just touting on the internet that your tuner is the best because my car never ever knocks. You want to make sure that it's actually not knocking, that it's actually running correctly. And if it's never been ran on a dyno and the tune that you're using has never been dyno tested, it's kind of hard to say that it is good or not. So just take it with a grain of salt, make sure that you're monitoring your car, you're logging your car, and if things sound too good to be true, they probably are. Thanks for watching.